Good evening, dear children. We have been discussing evidences for evolution. Already, we have started fossils. The hard remnant parts are imprints left by the extincted organisms are known as fossils. Study about fossils is known as paleontology. Father of paleontology, Leo uh, da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci, father of modern paleontology, George Cuvier, an eminent paleontologist from India, Birbal Shakni. Until here, we have discussed in the previous class. Next, the types of the fossils. First one is unaltered fossils. The dead bodies of extinct animals or organisms, the whole Organism, if it is available of uh, extincted organism, uh, we say those are the unaltered uh, fossils, whole body, whole body of uh, extincted organisms. Example, I think you know, woolly mammoth. And uh, this uh, Egyptians, uh, they have preserved the, the human dead bodies. We say mummies. And uh, insects uh, which were preserved, which were buried in uh, amber. Amber means uh, it is a resin, plant uh, resin. Plants desecrate, some of the plants desecrate resin. If the insects' bodies are buried or covered in the amber, so such a, uh, a fossils, these are examples for unaltered fossils. Next one, altered or petrified fossils. Or petrified fossils. Fossils. These are the not whole body bodies. Some hard parts of the extincted organisms like hard parts like teeth. Uh, 
बॉन्ड्स एंड इन केस ऑफ प्लांट्स हॉर्ड बॉन्ड एंड अदर हॉर्ड मटेरियल्स ऑफ द प्लांट्स विच एंड दिस आर द इफ सच ए मटेरियल्स आर अवेलेबल of the extincted organisms we said altered or petrified fossils if you take the teeth bones in the animals teeth and bones both inorganic salts inorganic materials and organic materials both are present during fossilization in the teeth and bones the organic material of these parts replaced by the inorganic minerals organic material of the of such a parts replaced by a minerals this process replacement of organic materials by the minerals this is known as petrification if you find any hard remnants of extincted organisms in those materials generally the organic material replaced by the minerals that's why such a such a altered fossils also known as petrified fossils so some skeleton or bones of the dinosaur and several other mammals extinct mammals and even other vertebrates now they are available so it is about altered or petrified fossils next casts or molds This is molds or casts. First, let us see the process of the formation of these molds and casts or casts. We can easily understand what they are. So, let us go back some hundred billion years back. Now it is. 2021 let us go back some 100 million years years there was for suppose some 100 million years back an animal species it was thriving living or suppose it is an animal animal species one of the individual it is died this dead body it is completely covered by the a mud completely covered by the mud dead body immediately covered by the mud so this mud become hardened this span of time 100 million of years this inside a dead body total dead body 
it is decomposed it is already decomposed but the shape of that animal it was left size and shape of that animal it is left uh, in this mud so such a uh, things are said to be mouths or cats so uh, if you uh, if you animals extincted animals even some uh, a plant leaves available in the form of mud or casts next is another one uh, impressions impressions molds If you take mouse or cat, dead body is buried in your mud. As a result, a shape is formed. But if you take impressions, now if you observe animals while they are roaming in the its in their habitat, we can observe. the footprints footprints of uh, elephant uh pug marks of uh, tiger like this so some of footprints of the uh, animals while they are living footprints are formed footprint the footprints of uh, any uh, animals generally they are uh, they are uh, removed by the wind or water current uh, like this in certain conditions such a footprints can be preserved for long a uh, period for long time fortunately such a footprints of the extinct organisms if available we say they are the impressions so these impressions left by the extinct organisms while they are alive by the live organisms they were left if you take this one molds left by the dead bodies it is the impression and molds next step compressions it is related to the plants plant uh, extincted plant species not to the animals the outer hard parts of the extincted plants if available those are said to be compressions outer hard parts like bark all the hard parts of the extincted plant species are said to be compressions if you take the plants in the bark we can observe different kinds of uh, substances like uh, resins gums tannins uh, lignin like this such a materials 
they are resistant to the uh, decomposition. So, in case of few plants, outer hot pots, they are not easily decomposed. So, such a outer hot pots of the extinct plant species, now if it is available, they are said to be compressions. Next, other evidences. pellets of uh, different uh, animal species, especially mammals, their share size from one species to other species, a lot of difference is there. For suppose, if we take the feces of elephant, feces of uh, some zebra, then the material texture, size, uh, in several other aspects, uh, differences are there. So, the fecal pellets, fecal pellets of extinct animals, animals, now, if, if they are available, such a, a things are said to be caprolites. Caprolite. Uh, example, fecal pellets of Cenozoic mammals. Fecal pellets of Cenozoic mammals. Mammals. The mammals which lived in the Cenozoic period, those extinct mammals, some scientists, paleontologists, they collected, uh, collected. So they are caprolites. So these are the different types of, uh, of fossils. Next, uh, if you find any fossil, the next thing is uh, we have to find out the age of that fossil. So we can say it is uh, dating of the fossil. Dating of, uh, of fossils. For suppose we got here a skeleton of dinosaur, skeleton of the dinosaur, skeleton. Now we have to find out what is the age of this. Uh, uh, fossil. So, to find out the age, that means how many years back it was lived on the earth, that is the uh, age of the which one? This fossil. It lived, for suppose, this dinosaur, it lived somewhere. Uh, 250 million years back, years back. So this fossil age is 250 million years. You don't confuse. 
our age, uh, our lifespan is 100 years. We say, uh, now my age is 40 years. You are students, your age is some six, 70 years. Don't confuse with this age. If you take dinosaurs, when they lived on the earth, they have some certain lifespan. It is some um, 50 years or 100 years or 200 years. We are not saying that age. From now, this fossil, from now, when it was lived on the earth, finding the death, gap, finding the death, year, finding the death period, it is said to be dating of the fossils. Uh, finding the dating of fossil means finding the age of, uh, of fossils, available fossils. For this, uh, several methods are there. Generally, we depend on radioactive substances. First one is uh, uranium uh, lead uh, method. Uranium and lead method. Uranium two thirty five. Uranium two thirty five. Uranium is the radioactive substance. The radioactive substances. They are unstable materials, chemicals, substances. By emitting the radiation, losing the energy, they try to uh, get stabilized. So in, the, in that process, uranium, by emitting the radiation, uranium converted into a lead, a 206. So, half of the uranium, or suppose if you take 10 grams of uranium, 5 grams of uranium in the 10 grams, 5 grams of uranium to be converted into lead, it takes 4.5 billion years. Billion years. We say it is half life. So, what is the half-life of uh, this uranium uh, 235 half-life? It is 4.5 billion years. Uh, with this, how can we, with this method, how can we calculate the age of fossils? So, during paleontological survey, but after digging several layers, some fossil is collected. Nearby this fossil, generally rocks are present. Rocks are present. So these rocks, which are nearby the fossil, they are collected. In the rocks, from the from those rocks, this uranium is isolated. Some required amount of uranium is isolated, and it is calculated how much of half life is completed. For suppose one billion years half life is is completed, that means. This fossil age is uh, 1 billion years. So in this manner, by calculating the how much of half-life is completed, uh, we can uh, find out the age of the 
available fossils. Not only uranium lead method, one more uh, method. Uh, it is a carbon dating method. Carbon dating method. C12 is the normal carbon. It is a C14, it is the radioactive carbon. This C14, by emitting the radiation, it becomes a, which one? N14, nitrogen. So, half life of this radioactive carbon is of life of life five thousand six hundred and thirty years six hundred and thirty years this point is important. By using the carbon dating method, we can find out the age of fossils up to 58,000 years, 58,000 to 62,000 years. So here be careful. Half life is just 5630 years, but by this carbon dating method, we can find out the age of the fossils which are older up to 58,000 to 62,000 years. If a fossil age is 58,000 years, we can find out the its age. If the fossil age is 40,000 years, we can find out its age by this method. If you have another fossil age is just some 5,000 years, uh, then also uh, we can find out the age of that fossil by this carbon dating method. Uh, here in the compound dating method, in the organism's body, lot of carbon is present. In the carbohydrates, uh, proteins, uh, lipids, uh, in all organic molecules, carbon is present. In the nature, most of the carbon is C12, normal carbon, and a, a small amount of carbon, it is radioactive carbon. While these animals or organisms, they are they were living, some of the carbon, a small amount of carbon, compulsory, it is a C14. We do same thing in our body. 99.9% it is a C12 only. Just a small amount. It is C14. So from the if we collect, if we find a fossil from that fossil material, they isolate C14. It's how much of off life is completed uh, based on that uh, they can calculate the age of the fossil. That is the carbon dating method. Next, uh, potassium organ method. Potassium organ method. Potassium. 40K is the radioactive substance. 
by emitting the radiation it is converted into the faulty or the faulty error its half life is 1.5 Half life is at one point three to ten power nine years. This much of years. By using this method, how much of half life of potassium is completed? Based on that also, we can calculate the age of the fossils. Here, in the in the nature. in the earth crust or in the nature in the environment of the earth this potassium potassium is very common element potassium is very common uh, so some of the potassium a small amount of potassium compulsory it is a radioactive potassium such a radioactive potassium is found in the organism's body if we get a fossil taking some small sample from that sample isolating the radioactive potassium and calculating how much of its sorry half life is completed in that manner <coughs> sorry in that manner we can calculate the <coughs> sorry we can calculate the age uh, of the fossils so here the important thing potassium is very common uh, element in the nature so that's why we can easily found You can easily find a forty k radioactive potassium in almost all of fossils. So next, sir, another method: electron spin resonance method. Electron spin resonance. a method so it is somewhat in this electron spin resonance method also they use radioactive substances but it is somewhat different method among all these methods uranium lead carbon dating potassium argon and electron spin resonance method in all these methods the very accurate method in finding the age of fossils it is the which one electron spin resonance method eso accurate method at present which is the very accurate method in finding the age of fossils it is electron spin the resonance a method so it is the dating of uh, of fossils Uh, next evidence it is a connecting link as a, a missing links missing links 
First, let us say one example for the missing link, then we can easily understand. Uh, it is uh, use 10 of 10. Use 10 of 10. It is a missing link uh, between fishes and amphibians. Fishes and amphibians. Now, fishes are living on the earth, amphibians also living on the earth. If you take this Eastern Amptara, it was an animal. This animal having some features of fishes in its body and having some features of amphibians. So this animal Eustan of Terra having features of both fishes and amphibians. Not all fish features of all, all features of fishes, some features of fishes and some features of amphibians were found, were, were there in this Eastern of Terra. Now fishes are there, amphibians are there, but eastern of Tehran, it is extinct. Now it is not living on the earth, it was extinct. Once it was lived on the earth, so such a, oh, such a things, we say they are the missing links. Such a animals we say missing links. Missing links means they are the extinct animals or organisms having the features of two different life forms. It is the meaning of missing links. Sea uh, warrior. This Sea Moria, it was a missing link between amphibians and reptiles. And reptiles. Sea Moria, it was lived on earth once upon a time. Now it is an extinct animal. This, when it was living, it, this Yamoria, it had, it had some features of amphibians and some features of reptiles. So this is a proof. Missing link is a proof, evidence that. Reptiles evolved from the which one? Amphibians. In the same manner, uh, based on this Eastern Amphibian, we can say Amphibians evolved from the which one? Fishes. Okay. Next, another example. Archaeopteryx. It was a missing link between reptiles and birds. This Archaeopteryx, it is very famous, you know about it. Archaeopteryx, once it was lived, it had some features of reptiles and some features of birds. Now there is no Archaeopteryx. It was extinct already. So it is considered one of the missing link. 
missing link between which one red piles on the boards another example uh sign of nanas this sign of nanas it was a missing link between reptiles and and mammals the sign of nanas already it is extinct why it was living this sign of nanas it had some features of reptiles and some features of mammals it knew and evidence that mammals evolved from the reptiles so these are the some examples for the which one missing links missing links they are the which one extinct or existing uh, organisms they are the extinct uh, uh, extinct organisms which having the features of two different life forms it is a, a these are the different missing links here this archaeopteryx it is very important we have to discuss what were the reptilian features of archaeopteryx what were the avian features of archaeopteryx let us see this archaeopteryx reptilian features reptilian features and avian features reptilian features first one teeth are present in the uh, in the mouth of archaeopteryx if you take the uh, boards uh, in them uh, teeth are absent in the reptiles uh, teeth are present so archaeopteryx they had a teeth in its mouth so it is a reptilian feature and uh, a straight or flat a key flat a steps flat sternum or we say keelless keelless sternum now a little this archaeopteryx now if we take boards present it a boards sternum means brush board uh, they have they have flight muscles flight muscles are connected between the wings under this sternum for the film attachment of the flight muscles to the sternum the sternum surface it is somewhat a zigzag we say this zigzag fashion of the sternum such a sternum we say keeled sternum keeled or keeled sternum so in the present in the in all words of present it sternum is in the sternum keel is present keel means nothing but it is not uh, uh, smooth its surface is a zigzag for the film attachment of the visual flight muscles such a keeled sternum it was absent 
in the orchia pharynx so in the reptiles also sternum is there it is keelless sternum so it is a flat sternum it is a feature of which one reptilian feature next one. a free caudal vertebrae free caudal vertebrae if you take take the tail of vertebrates in the tail region also vertebrae are present in lower vertebrates in the fishes amphib in the tailed amphibians and in the reptiles vertebrae in the tail they are free they are not fused with each other so archaea pharynx in it vertebrae they are free in the caudal region it is a reptilian feature if it had presented a uh, birds and the human beings those caudal vertebrae they are fused in the presented a birds caudal vertebrae they are fused but in the archaea pharynx they are not they were not fused so it was a it was a reptilian feature uh, next uh, archaea pharynx it had a long tail long longer tail so if you take the uh, hen if you take birds for uh, suppose peacock it has long tail that is not a tail those are the which one a tail feather tail tail feathers for suppose if you take the hen after removal of all feathers like this we observe this part this is the tail in this tail only is a vertebra uh, caudal vertebrae are present these feathers these are the which one tail feathers actual tail is which one this one after removal of feathers we observe a small tail in the present day birds if we take reptiles in the especially in the lizards we can observe the long tail so this archaea pharynx had a long tail like reptiles presented a birds they have the which one very short tail so long tail it is a feature of which one reptiles uh, so these are the reptilian features in the archaea pharynx next uh, avian features a uh, beak the jaws are modified into the beak it had a beak so it was a avian feature more feature of a of the birds next uh, uh, one more thing in the archaea pharynx non pneumatic bones it is very important non pneumatic uh, bones in the present day bones the longer bones they are filled with air we say they are the pneumatic bones an adaptation for the flight in the archaea pharynx all the bones they were solid only bones they are not filled with air like reptiles archaea pharynx bones they were which one solid bones non pneumatic bones so but that point uh, avian features beak is there and uh, four limbs modified into the uh, wings and uh, body is covered wings and body is covered by the which one feathers
if you dive birds a total body wings and total body is covered by feathers so archaeopteryx its body covered by the feathers and uh, one pair of uh, limb four limbs one pair uh, in the limbs four limbs they are modified into the wings the remaining uh, limbs those are the legs like to present it as boards if we observe the boards presented as boards on their legs we can observe the scales legs are covered by the scales so this archaeopteryx legs they were similar to the presented as legs presented as boards legs so these are the uh, reptilian features in the archaeopteryx and avian features in the visual archaeopteryx archaeopteryx it had some features of reptiles and some features of uh, boards based on this archaeopteryx mystically we can say boards have been evolved from the reptiles from the reptiles this archaeopteryx such a animals evolved from them boards have been evolved so okay my dear children let us continue let us discuss other evidences in the next class all of you bye bye see you later